Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, more than a quarter of a million people who'd have uh, payday loans from Wonga have been warned that hackers may have stolen their personal data. The cyber attackers have taken account details of customers in the UK and also in Poland. Let's talk more about this with Tom Wiggins, who is the deputy editor of Stuff magazine. Always great to see you. Thanks for joining okay. us. So, how do we know, first of all, if we've been hacked? I mean, do we know before somebody's actually used our details? Uh, not necessarily, no. I think maybe uh, a lot of the people that have p potentially been hacked in this, this Wonga case uh, would not have known about it unless Wonga had told them because they won't necessarily have any detail stolen, any detail, sorry, stolen that can be used in a, in a sort of negative way against them. Um, so you can't always tell, no. OK, so how do we protect ourselves in the first place then from being hacked? So the, I think the important thing to point out here is that this uh, Wonga one is uh, an attack on the larger sort of Wonga um, network rather than sort of through a, a particular individual's uh, personal account. So yes. there's probably nothing that anyone could have done to stop no, that from not happening. not in this particular but, case, but more personally. Yeah. Um, I mean, passwords are obviously a big thing. Uh, a lot of companies now are making it a requirement that your passwords are a lot more uh, sophisticated than before, so you can't just use password one two three four lots of different alphanumeric uh, requirements in there and things like that so that's that's obviously very important try not to share use the same ones everywhere although obviously i think we all know that's very easy to do um interesting were... i tried to change i had cause to change my passwords on apple yesterday yeah um and it's much more complicated it is. than it used to be it's actually a bit of a pain which um is kind of a good thing i suppose because it shows exactly how difficult it is uh, or they're trying to make it certainly to it's a two-stop verification process that's what they call it, it yeah. yeah so they will have a uh, phone number for you as well so you'll be doing this on your computer or ipad or phone or whatever mm -hmm. uh, and they will then send you a separate code which goes to your phone that you would have to put in as well so if someone was trying to hack into your account they had your password chances are they're not going to have your phone as well uh, and and use that be able to use that to get into your account and also with the letters as you said it's alphanumeric but also you have to have capital letters in between the middle of your password numbers well, uh yeah non uh you know underscores things like that you yeah know, to put them in so you kind of you need to come up with new ways uh of remembering your passwords i think to really help and there were there are certain apps things like one password writing which... it down in your phone doesn't count okay <laughs> just so you know that's not a good idea at all what do we do if we have been hacked uh, I think that, I mean, obviously the first thing to do is things like changing your passwords. Um, it's, it's very difficult. I think case by case, it's, it's difficult to know what to do. Um, but uh, yeah, change passwords everywhere, pretty much, I think, because uh, if you have been hacked, there's, you, you, you have no real way of knowing necessarily uh, what information has been stolen from you. So uh, yes, yeah, change absolutely everything you can think of, pretty much. And hackers are much more sophisticated, aren't they, in, in getting your details? Yeah. They, they pretend that they are someone else, that, yep. and you then have to give, or you think that you have to give them your So Yeah, that's the sort details. of, uh, it's, it's kind of uh, an, an old school way of doing it now, I suppose, is yeah, but trying to pretend that you are uh, sending a message from the company that uh, that, that your the customer is, is signed up to or whatever but a lot of the time I find it quite funny the way that you can see those by there's quite often spelling mistakes in the emails that you get sent and they're out. from Nigeria <laughs> it's always a big clue that's a bit it? of a giveaway but um, people don't necessarily spot that looking at the URL so the, the address bar in the browser if something looks suspicious about that the easiest thing is if you've got any suspicions at all just don't do it and and phone up the the company and check that you're not being scammed i was um, i was hacked the other day on my aol account which i yes. found what i thought was quite interesting you was got hacked from that the past by the sounds of it yes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing wrong with aol i love my aol account <laughs> if you don't mind young man but what they, they also do they're very clever that um all of the responses don't actually they go into your spam folder so yeah. you don't know you've been hacked yes uh well i mean this is the thing isn't it yeah without being extra vigilant, if it's uh, you know a, a bank account or something, being extra vig vigilant about what's going on with your account, you might not necessarily know about it. So you know things like um, fingerprint sensors that are coming on on most phones oh, yeah. now. Uh, I Do think you, is that a good idea? I think so. Yeah, um, I use HSBC to bank, and they use that as their security method to get into the the mobile app. 
you'd like to think that if a bank is using it and is you know trusting enough of that uh, as a security measure that, that it should be fairly safe yeah and people like Wonga and we've seen um lots of other big companies that yeah. have been hacked uh, or partially hacked over the last six months or so are they doing enough uh, well it would seem not but i mean it's difficult to say uh, it, you know, it's a kind of cat and mouse game of everything that the the banks and the, the, the companies do to try and stop this thing from happening. There's always going to be someone else out there trying to get around it some way. And it's a case of just trying one, one trying to step ahead of the other. You've got to hope, I suppose, that it's the companies that are managing to do that rather than the, the criminals. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, why are you being so sniffy about AOL out of interest? Just because I've had an email since before he was born. <laughs> Just because it's not 1996 anymore, you know? <laughs> Off. You go in the chat rooms as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never tell. It's great to see you. Tom. Thanks yeah. very much as always. Thanks a lot. Again, okay, you're watching Sky News. Payday lender Wonga has warned almost a quarter of a million customers that their private data may have been stolen in a cyber attack. Hackers have taken details from customers in the UK and also Poland. Our technology correspondent Tom Cheshire is in our central London studio for us. Hello to you, Tom. How bad is this? This is pretty bad. It's not the biggest number of accounts we've ever seen. You think Yahoo got hacked with more than one billion, so that isn't anywhere near it. But if you think about what sort of information has been taken here, that's the worrying part of it. So you've got names, you've got email addresses, but then you've got dates of birth, you've got bank account numbers, sort codes, and then bank the last four numbers of credit and debit cards. So that's quite a lot of sensitive financial information that's got out there. They don't know how many of their 245,000 customers have been hacked. They first had an inkling on Tuesday. They confirmed that inkling on Friday and started reporting it to customers on Saturday. But now, this is what always happens with attack. You spot the initial breach and then you scramble to find out just how much has been taken. Because a lot of the time it looks like a very big hack to start with, turns out to be not so many people involved as we saw with TalkTalk. Or it looks to be a small attack, as with Sony, and then you realise all your emails, say, have been stolen. So that's what Wonga's doing now. It's reported it to the police, to the Information Commissioner's Office, to the FCA. But they'll be trying to work out exactly how big this attack was and how exactly it happened as well. Indeed. So, and what does that mean for people like Wonga? Once the dust has settled, presumably regulators look at how well they were prepared for hackers. Exactly that. So with TalkTalk, Talk, that was uh, what's known as a MySQL attack, which is a very old attack. People have known it for a long time. It's very simple. In fact, the hacker who used that, he was younger than that vulnerability he exploited to get in. And as a result, they were fined by the Information Commissioner's Office. That's what will happen here. They'll look and say, well, was this simple or was this sophisticated? And it, again, it's very hard to tell. With that Yahoo hack, more than one billion accounts hacked. Um, Initially, everyone thought, well, that's just Yahoo having terrible security. And then it turned out that actually the Russian state was involved. That's what the FBI ended up saying. And so attackers go to incredible lengths to hide their footprints. On the other hand, what we've had so far from this, this looks like as damaging as it is and as sensitive as this financial information is. So far, all we know about is one customer database that's been hacked. That might suggest it's not too sophisticated, but we don't know until we're told more, until the investigation runs its course. And right now, Wonga aren't saying anything. They're not putting anyone up, despite repeated requests for interview, to even talk about their security settings. But on their website, you'll go on their website, ask about security, they've got a page for it, and the website says, well, Wonga is extremely secure. That's proved not to be the case. And what do you do, finally, if you think that your details have been hacked? If you are a Wonga customer and you're worried about this, and they are emailing people to say exactly this, you should let your bank know, um, just so they're aware of any fraudulent activity that might happen. Also, monitor your account if there are unusual transactions. Probably the most important thing is to keep an eye out for phishing emails. So this is emails that might be purporting to be from your bank, which they know now, uh, saying we need this information. That would be trying to get more personal information from you or to try and get you to click malicious links. That can also be done as a telephone call. So if you get any calls or emails out of the blue asking you for information and you're a Wonga customer, you should really ignore those and get in touch with Wonga themselves to let them know about it. Okay, lovely. Thank you. I've been getting away with it all.